Hi, another video from Fast Tech. In this one today, I'm going to be talking about this PS4 Slim. It looks like it took a fall. Case is uh, broken pretty badly. It looks like it did probably fall, it fell down a flight of stairs or something, or it did take damage at some point. The customer wasn't very specific about what happened to it. But what, what's happening now, when you try to put a disc in it, it doesn't go in. Uh, and when you start the console, I'm just going to turn it off and turn it back on. When you start the console, it's going to make this noise, which you're going to hear in about a second. It's going to make that noise. And it sounds like, it sounds like there's uh, some kind of a mechanical issue with the disk drive. Uh, and if you remove the top cover like I did, is that there's uh, a dent on the top case here. This is what a good one should look like. Uh, not dented, and this one is dented. It's got like a wave in it. So it probably, uh, um, probably got hit here at some point and it dented this piece in and it's causing the disk drive actuators to malfunction. So yeah, the console just, it's, it's restarting right now and every time it starts, it makes this noise. And if that's the case, it's either this piece right here or it's the actuators on the disk drive or the roof of the disk drive could also be damaged and we might be looking at replacing that as well. Uh, but we're gonna start by removing these screws. Well, first thing I'm gonna turn the PS4 off. I'll just unplug it and turn the PS4 off. I'm going to start taking these screws out. I don't even know what that is. That doesn't even look like a bolt. We're going to have to remove this heat shield just so it can get out of the way. What do we have here? There's also cables that are disconnected. So this isn't going to work even after that alignment. So this cable's out for some reason. I don't know why that one was also kind of disconnected. Let's see how much of a difference that made. I think it will still make the noise, but we might have... Uh, So now it's spinning the disc, which it was not doing before, but it's making that, that noise, which is probably because of this right here. And there could be other issues with the disc drive at this point. Alright. Just want to remove the power supply. So to open uh, your PS4 Slim, you need a Torx T8H and a Phillips screwdriver. We sell both of them on our website, and I'm going to put a link in the description box for you guys. Once you remove these screws from the power supply, uh, we're going to flip it over. And then there is, I believe, there, I believe one or two screws on this side that we have to remove to get the power supply out. This one, and I believe this one. Here. And now the power supply should be free, yes. There's a cable in the front. You're gonna be very careful with that cable. We're gonna pull it out, wiggle and pull. Like that. Put the power supply to the side, flip it over again. Actually, now I'm noticing that the whole frame is bent here. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it on the camera, but the whole frame of the system is bent. I'm surprised that the motherboard even turns on because uh, that's a big curve right here, guys. Right here. Um, 
I hope the camera picks it up, but it's curved pretty much. And it's amazing to me that the motherboard's even functioning at this point, but it is. All right, guys, so while working on this unit, I actually discovered something interesting um, that I hadn't noticed before, my employee did, but I didn't. Uh, so this right here is a PS4 Slim uh, 2115 model. Uh, and the previous models that I uh, am more, I was more familiar with, and the, some of the models that you've seen in my previous videos have been uh, PS4 Slim 2015 models. And as you can see here, they look almost identical, like the frames of them look identical. But you'll notice that on the newer um, 2115 unit, instead of there being screws here, like there was on the older unit, so you could remove this panel eas easily if anything went wrong with it. Now on the new unit, there's plastic rivets, which they don't have a screw head on them or there's no good way to take them out. I don't know why Sony would do this. The only reason I can think of is that they don't want you to open your system if something does go wrong with it, because this frame does break quite often. And if this frame breaks, it can stop your fan from spinning, which would cause your system not to even run for more than five minutes. Or if this frame gets damaged, your disk drive is not going to be accepted. Your disk, uh, sorry, your disk drive is not going to accept disks. So the only reason I can think of is why they put plastic rivets is that they don't want you to disassemble this thing and fix it if this thing breaks, which I think is completely insane. Like, I don't know why they would get rid of the screws that they had on the previous model, which made it super easy to remove this piece. All you'd have to do is remove these screws and it comes out. But on the new model, it's plastic rivets. So now what I'd have to do is to do this, either I'd have to break these rivets or I'd have to replace the whole mid-frame with another model that has rivets on it also. And the motherboard will have to come out. Everything will have to come out. That's gonna be a lot of labor. Uh, I'm not sure if the customer is gonna wanna pay for that. So one option would be to break these rivets. We can still have this piece held down because there's two or three other screws that uh, we can put in, but we, we might have to break these rivets. The other way is to replace the whole mid-frame, which would require taking the motherboard out and doing it that way. So now uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip the console over since we're actually replacing the whole mid-frame. We're gonna remove all these screws here. All these screws are gonna come out, all of them. And then this plate right here is gonna come off. And then we're gonna take the mother motherboard out. You can check my other videos. Uh, I've done this in detail, taking the motherboard out on these. I'm not gonna be doing it in detail this time. Uh, but basically, I'm gonna give you guys an overview of how we're doing it. We're gonna remove these screws, uh, and then we're gonna take the motherboard out. All right, guys, so we took the plate off. We took the back plate off. Um, and then what you're gonna do is gonna remove all these cables that connect to the motherboard. One of them is for the power I.O. board. Uh, and these three are for the disk drive. Uh, two of these, this one and this one, you can just pull them out. This one has a clip, which you lift and pull out. Uh, and, th and then there's gonna be a cable here that connects to the power supply. I'm gonna remove that. And then I'm gonna take the motherboard out, okay? That's the motherboard. And you know what's crazy? It, to me, it looks like the motherboard's a little bit bent too. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but it looks like the motherboard's bent. And it's kind of a miracle that this thing actually even still works. So, as you can see, this frame is badly bent. It shows you how bad it is. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove some screws here. There's a couple of them, one here, and then there might be one here, but I think it's not there anymore. And we're gonna, we're gonna take this plate out. We're gonna have to take the disk drive out and the fan, and we're gonna have to transfer it over uh, into our new frame right here. And we sell this frame also on our website, guys. We sell all parts on our, on our website for PS4s. We sell this, I'll put a link in the description box for it. So we're gonna remove this, and then we're gonna transfer everything onto this frame. So guys, on the newer slim models, on the PS4 2115 and uh, 2100 units, uh, 2115 in America and Canada, there's this piece right here that sits on the heat sink. You don't want to uh, lose it. Um, this piece goes in right here, and then there's a screw on the other side that goes in through here and holds this piece in place. So you want to be very careful with this little piece right here. You want to take it out and put it on the side and make sure you don't forget to put it back in. Now we're gonna remove this frame. There's a screw in the corner here. I'm gonna remove that. 
As you can see, this is pretty badly bent, but this piece we can just bend it back in shape. No big deal. There's some dust in here, we're gonna clean that out. Now, we're gonna remove the screws that hold the disc drive in place. And the fan. And the antenna also is gonna have to be transferred. Move the antenna, the IO board, power button, I mean. Here, two more for the fan. Fans out. This drive, antenna, and the power button all came out in one go. There's this power cable right here that runs the power supply. We're gonna have to reuse this one. We're just gonna take it out. We're gonna put our old crappy BS frame <laughs> to the side and then put our new frame in. This drive and antenna goes in first. I'm gonna put all the screws back in. Cable back in. So the antenna's a little bit bent, I'm just gonna put it back in shape. If, if this uh, connection right here was broken, then this antenna would not be working and your controller would not be picking up a signal. Uh, but this connection looks like it's good. If you get controller lag or input lag on your PS4, then you need to replace this antenna. The connection is most likely gonna be broken. button okay so now we're we're just gonna um, we're just gonna reassemble the console we're gonna put the motherboard back in all right so now we've replaced the frame this frames a lot better the console uh, is not curved shape anymore uh, we're gonna start reassembling it um, we're gonna start putting the heat sink back in. Actually, this piece kind of looks like it's in bad shape too. I mean, some of these points are kind of bent. Should I reuse this or should I replace it? You know what, I think we're gonna replace this piece too because it's just, it's not perfect and We've come this far, so we might as well replace this also. So we're gonna replace this piece, the heatsink piece. It's it could be, it could be reused, but I'd rather not. Uh, it's it's not perfect. Like some of the screw mounting points are bent here, as you can see. Uh, like I said, it's still completely usable, um, but I just I I've, we already reassembled it, so I might as well have everything perfect. All right, guys. So uh, one thing I forgot to check. Um, which I should have checked, um, considering the damage on this console, was the disk drive roof. Uh, I forgot to check it, uh, I just I transferred it over without flipping it over. But as you can see here, um, the actuators are not moving in their uh, idle position, which is here. They're supposed to like spring back right here when I release them, like this. On this one, this is a good one, and that's what it should be doing. 
but this one doesn't do that. So we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to remove this frame, and we're gonna have to put this one on uh, to make it work. So we're gonna be putting this frame on this one, putting the disc drive in, finally reassembling everything, uh, and uh, basically um, putting it back together and then testing it out. Hey guys, so I've reassembled uh, the console, not fully, because I always like to test uh, the console first before I fully reassemble it, because otherwise I'll have to take it apart again. Uh, but we uh, re uh, replaced the disc drive on it, uh, sorry, the roof mechanism of the disc drive. We replaced the roof mechanism of the disc drive and I've reassembled it. I've put a disc in, it sounds like it's spinning. I'm gonna plug a controller in to see, uh, to make sure that it works. So it's at the initial setup right now. I'm gonna skip all that. We just wanna make sure that the disk drive's reading. It sounds like it's spinning good because before what was happening was as soon as you turn the console on, it would make this grinding noise. It's really nasty. And now it's not doing that. It's just smooth uh, spinning and movement. It sounds brand new, and we didn't even have to replace the whole disk drive, just the roof mechanism in this case. And it looks like it's loading the game now, as you can see here, which it was not doing before. Uh, so there you have it, guys. Uh, I'm gonna reassemble it uh, for the customer, but it looks like it's working. And we'll probably test it one more time once we reassemble it. And this is the roof mechanism here that was busted, as you can see. It's, uh, it's got this curve to it. No matter how much you try straightening it out, in 99% of the cases, you're not gonna be able uh, to because these are uh, flattened and aligned with machines. And uh, you, no matter how much you try, uh, you, you can't get it right uh, once it's bent. Uh, I've tried it a bunch of times. I, I think I was only successful maybe twice because the, this point right here has to be at the exact right height. Uh, and has to be aligned with the motor to spin the disc correctly. And if you don't have that, then you're gonna have issues. If you don't have the perfect amount of uh, clearance there. Okay, so I've put all the screws in. Uh, put the power supply in, put the bolts in for that. I've put all the screws in for the motherboard. Uh, now we're just gonna put the case on. I, I'm not putting the same case back on because that one uh, was cracked. We don't wanna put that in. Um, the latch for the hard drive uh, enclosure is also broken, but it doesn't matter, it's, it'll still be functional. You can still pull it with this. But um, yeah, we're gonna install the, the case on. Bottom first. The back should click in like so. We're gonna put the torque screw in. And again, we sell this screwdriver on our website. Uh, the link's gonna be in the description. You're gonna need this specific screwdriver to open your console, and you can't find these at Home Depot or, or Walmart. Put that screw in. Now we're gonna install the top case. I'm gonna push it down, and you should hear uh, a click. That's when you know it's in. Uh, and uh, we're pretty much done. I'm just gonna put our Fast Tech warranty sticker on it because this customer is gonna be getting a six months warranty. All our services include a six months warranty by default, unless you upgrade to one or two years or even three years for some repairs, uh, and which is obviously uh, at an additional cost. Uh, but the, the, the warranty is worth it for certain jobs, like if you do a motherboard replacement or something like that, it's a good idea to usually get that extended warranty just so you have that um, peace of mind. All right, I'm gonna put our Fast Tech warranty sticker on here at the back. Uh, and we also have to put the hard drive cover in, which is here somewhere. <laughs> the hard drive cover in. The latch for the hard drive enclosure is broken, but it, it's, it's okay, it's, we sh it's, it should still be functional because we can still pull the hard drive out with it. So we're going to put the hard drive cover in, uh, and once that clicks in place, uh, we're pretty much done at this point. Um, 
I'm gonna test it one more time because I, uh, I have it fully reassembled now. I'm gonna test it one more time before I ship it back to the customer. Okay, so I've turned the console on, and uh, again, it's not making that nasty noise that it was making uh, before we uh, did the service on it. As soon as you turn it on, it would make uh, a grinding noise, which it's not doing anymore. It's loading right now into uh, the home screen. Disc spinning good. And the game looks like it's coming up now, which is what it was not doing before. Set the screen size, and it looks like it, it's loading, it's, it's working, uh, it's working now, and um, uh, this, this, this unit's now uh, ready to be shipped back to our customer. Uh, and again, guys, we sell all the parts that you saw that we used on our website, including the screwdrivers, the, the roof mechanism, anything that you need uh, for your PlayStation, we have it. We have literally all parts, uh, and we also offer the service if you don't want to do this repair yourself. So check, uh, check us out for that. I'm gonna put all the links in the description box and uh, if you need anything, check out our website at www.fasttech.ca or fasttechstore.com and I'll catch you in the next one.